Covington Gate, as many people are calling it, and I feel like that's probably the best descriptor. We, we, we always attach gate to controversial things, and now we have Covington Gate. This story, which is going to be the primary focus of this video, because I, yes, I'm going to have much more videos on this as the story continues to develop. Journalist fired after wishing death on Covington Catholic High School students' parents' report. I want to talk about this, but I want to talk about the importance of highlighting the dangers of Covington Gate. But we'll start, uh, we'll, we'll read through this. So, a freelance, uh, a freelance vulture journalist was fired from his main job at digital company INE Entertainment after wishing death for multiple Covington Catholic high school students and their parents in the wake of the controversy over the incident between the students and the Native American activists. Eric Abris, a post-production supervisor at INE Entertainment, was fired after his tweets about the contro controversy involving teenage students. It went viral. They say he's, uh, uh, so they claimed that, well, they, they got quotes. So here's what he tweeted. He said, I don't know what it is, what it says about me, but I've truly lost the ability to articulate the hysterical rage, nausea, and heartache this makes me feel. He then goes on to say that he wants all those people to die, simple as that, every single one of them and their parents. Now, this is actually interesting. He was, he was, uh, in tweeting out this, this, this video, he was pushing this propaganda, this activist narrative. He was encouraging the harassment mob. But hold on. This is a complicated issue. He didn't say that he wanted anyone to do anything. He didn't threaten them. He just expressed how he didn't want these people to be alive anymore. There's a difference. There is. So this, is, admittedly for me, it's a conundrum. I think it's a bit uh, cathartic to see someone lose their job over joining in this mob. But at the same time, does this cross the line into an actual crime? It doesn't. So I, I've been doing some research on whether or not it's illegal to say things like, oh, won't someone rid me of this priest? If you're not familiar with that story, uh, you should look into it. But basically, would it be illegal if you tweeted, won't someone rid me of these kids? Right? You're not telling, you're not, you're not necessarily saying you want someone to actually do it. It's an expression. You're just, you know, bemoaning the, the awful children. He's saying he just wishes that they weren't alive anymore. Right? Is that a call to violence? Legally, it appears that it's not. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a gray area. And the challenge is that he is participating in a mob where he's saying this alongside many other people who are actually saying, go harm these kids. The problem is, do we hold him collectively accountable, right? When, when the activists on J20, the inauguration, they went and vandalized everything, that's what the government tried to do. They said this is a conspiracy because they were all actively involved in protecting each other. And there is something to be said for this guy feeling like it's okay for him to tweet these things because he's in a mob and the mob is saying it's true. And you can see other celebrities doing the same thing. But I think it's important to separate out the individual action from the others, especially on the internet, because this is just some doofy guy who said he doesn't like these people, he doesn't want to be alive. Is it hate speech? Technically, yes, he's, he's advocating for these people to die, but, or I'm sorry, he's expressing his desire for them to not be alive, right? I think it's a kind of br a simple way to put it. But uh, he's not telling anyone to do anything. He's not saying that he wants, uh, you know, he, he wants to go and commit an act. He doesn't want anyone else to do it. So this is questionable. However, all that matters is his company didn't like the fact that they were being associated with this hate mob, and thus he's lost his job. So this, this is an interesting question. You know, comment below and let me know what you think. Did this guy cross the line? First of all, look, I think he's a bad person. By, by all means, I would never associate with this awful person. But should he be fired? Should he be fired over this? I'm kind of leaning towards no. I think he should be reprimanded. But again, it's really, really complicated. Uh, you know, I think the main reason is I don't know at which point what he said is a crime. It's possible this is a crime. It's possible. I believe it's not. Right? I believe he would actually, act, uh, actually have to say, go and do X. And so long as he didn't, he didn't really do anything against the law. It's just questionable ethics and morals. That's a complicated question. Complicated question. Um, I lean more towards on the free speech side. So if you want to say you don't want people to be alive, uh, I think you're an awful person. But so but let's, let's read on. Racism is in its boomer death throes. It will die out with the younger generation. Exclamation point. Saying it sarc sarcastically. Look at the uh, S eating grins on all those young white slugs faces. Just perverse pleasure at wielding a false dominion. They've been taught their whole life was their divine right. Effing die. Okay. Well, then he adds effing die. So... You know, that could be seen, I think a court would actually look at that and say he's clearly being expressive. It's, it's not, I don't think he means it literally, but it's possible he does based on his previous statement. So once again, I'm not a judge. And I think we've hit a perfect gray area here. So you guys comment, let me know what you think. It's, it's tough. On Monday, the company told The Wrap, Abris was fired for his comments on social media that were deemed offensive. The journalist has since locked his Twitter account and deleted the tweets. 
This is what you do when you participate in a mob that unjustly targets people, you lose your, you lose your job. Freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequence. A phrase that means literally nothing, but activists like to push that out there when someone on the right loses their job or gets banned from social media. But isn't it funny that Twitter didn't ban him? Isn't it funny that Twitter hasn't banned any of these people? Isn't it funny that this chick, Kelly Ellis, said someone please, you know, she's encouraging others to punch the kid? How about solicitation for prostitution and a, and a felony? This woman, Sarah Beatty, said she would blow whoever manages to punch the kid in the face. That's offering something in exchange for an activity that is literally solicitation for prostitution. Look, I get it. She's, I don't think she's being serious. She's actually going to blow somebody, but it doesn't matter, okay? The point is, someone might actually think this is real and do it because how are you supposed to assume she's joking? I, I'm someone who likes to look at, you know, what try, try to understand the context, and I think she's trying to be funny. She's trying to be like, I hate this person so much, I'm going to say this joke, when in reality, there's going to be some someone who doesn't understand the context, and she made a verbatim solicitation for violence. So, look, this guy gets fired, and it's questionable. What about these people? But let's talk about a Twitter thread I just made earlier this morning, Covington Gate. Covington Gate needs to go down in infamy, as the time the far left, digital news publications, mainstream news outlets, and celebrities led a harassment campaign against a bunch of children without evidence, they didn't care, and many of them are still pushing this narrative. For one, Reza Aslan, uh, I believe he's a former CNN host, I don't know if he's still associated with CNN, he's still actively pushing out lies, claiming these kids were chanting, build the wall, they weren't. There's another video going viral, I'm going to address this later on, it doesn't, you know, where this woman posted a video where you can hear some, a group of kids sitting on a bench yelling MAGA and build the wall, and she's claiming they did. It's a different incident, right? It wasn't the same thing. It may be some of the same kids, we don't know. People are sharing an out of context clip again. It's got 60,000 retweets. I don't have it pulled up. We'll talk about that later today as the story develops. It turns out this woman pushing this narrative is also super racist. But this is what needs to be said. There is a clear path to radicalization, to identitarianism in the far left coming from these, these New York digital publications. They're incentivized by websites like Facebook and Twitter to produce rage bait. They produce articles that rile you up. Uh, I mentioned this in the thread at VidCon in 2017. The president of Now This News on stage said that they were working with anti-Trump activists to produce their content. By all means, be an anti-Trump activist. I don't care. The issue is when a major news publisher, right? They're not mainstream. They're not like CNN. Not, now This, I believe, is owned by NBC. I could be wrong. But they're a digital publication that gets billions of views per year. I, I literally think they get like 2 billion views per year. Maybe not so much anymore, but they were at one point. And they're producing propaganda. Okay, what is propaganda? It's information with a political slant to persuade you of a certain ideology or, or, or partisan belief. If you're hiring partisans and, and, and uh, activists to produce your information, that's literally propaganda. And that's what they're producing. This, the reason they do it is it's very likely because there's an incentive to the rage bait to generate uh, clicks, to, to get shares, anger makes people share. This is their path to radicalization. This, what you end up seeing is these New York outlets like now this will employ a young kid out of college, radicalize them by constantly encouraging the, them to promote uh, this rage bait. Then they eventually will get hired by the mainstream media. A really good example is Sarah Jong, a known racist. Sarah Jong for years published racist content and just like just some of the most bigoted, hateful things on Twitter. And you know what? More power to her. I think she's an awful, terrifying human being, and I'm glad she said these things so I know that. However, the New York Times didn't care. They hired her. And now she works in the tech department at the New York Times. What does that mean? Her ideology will be pushed out through the New York Times. These incentive, these systems are encouraging people to, be, to, to radicalization. They're pushing them towards far left and identitarian radicalization. And then as they get older, they start replacing the staff at the mainstream media. So what happens today with Covington Gate? You end up with New York Times, CNN, all these outlets, even conservative outlets, lying, doing no research. Why? For one, the economic incentive. Why bother researching what happened? Jump on the bandwagon. Give your, give your two cents to the hate mob instead of taking two seconds trying to figure out what happened. Sleep on it. That's what Crowder said in his video the other day. It's like, sleep on it, okay? And then video emerges. For me, I'll tell you what I did. I saw that first video and said, why should I care if some smug kid is, is smirking at an Indian guy, right? Nothing happened. This thing happens all the time.
Where was the outrage when the bike lock basher smashed someone over the head? Where was the outrage when the, when Antifa in Portland bashed a guy over the head with a club? Where's the outrage when Antifa was screaming race, uh, uh, racial slurs, racist slurs, at, at people in Portland? None. There's no outrage. None. Where was the outrage when that, when that young woman smacked the old man in D.C.? None. So why am I going to be outraged about this? I didn't tweet about, you know, I'm, 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 I'm over it. But here's, here's what happens. I'll tell you what my final thought was. Covington, Kate, Covington Gate will go down in infamy as the time the far, far left media outlets, celebrities, and even, and even major news outlets led a harassment campaign against children. Finally, we see, we see how Twitter does nothing. They don't stop the harassment. They don't ban the people calling for death. Those threats, those calls to violence I showed you earlier, they're still up. There's thousands of tweets still up. And so far, we've, we've heard of one person getting fired. And the funny thing is, this is not even the guy I think should be fired, right? It's questionable. Don't get me wrong. He's joining in this hate mob and he's pushing extreme hate, calling for, uh, saying he wants people to die. But at the same time, he's not advocating for anybody to do anything. So he's in a gray area. He Maybe or maybe not, he should be fired. But look at these other people. Offering sexual favors in exchange for felony violence against a child. Child, okay? I'm not, they're saying teen. Yeah, okay, we can say teen, but look, it's a minor. How about minor? Child, you know, people, it might be hyperbolic. A minor. And, 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 and what can we expect to happen? <laughs> Nothing. Covington Gate is evidence that far left media, mainstream news outlets, celebrities engage in these harassment campaigns and get away with it. Plain and simple. I'll have another video up at 1 p.m. because the story is constantly developing, so stick around and I will see you then. The main video, uh, I, there's a bunch of new stuff to address. That'll be on my main channel at 4 p.m., youtube.com slash timcast. I'll see you then.